what is up with the roof here in Florida. Stay tuned and I'm going to tell you. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode. It is July 4th and I hope everyone is enjoying their family this weekend. Hot dogs, hamburgers. I had my family here. We went to the pool. We had a great time. But today I have um, some really good information for you. Many of my buyers have these questions. So the first, if you're on my newsletter list, and I'll take this moment to talk about this up in the beginning, is every Friday I will review, um, I call it the good, the bad, the ugly, homes within the villages and maybe the surrounding areas. Um, I go through the MLS listing and talk to you about what I like, what I don't like, and what kind of opportunities I see for you as a buyer. But to view that, you must subscribe to my email newsletter list because the link for that video while on YouTube is unlisted. So you won't be able to search YouTube and find it. It won't be publicly available on my channel. You will actually have to get an email from me with the link. So um, if you click in the description below, you will see the link to sign up for my email newsletter. Also, you can go to my website and I'll list it down here, robincavallaro.com, and you can also sign up for my email newsletter there. I am in the process of changing a lot of the ways that I do business. And number one, my site might be down a little bit. I'm switching over from GoDaddy to another format. Um, changing around email servers. Um, I just got new editing software, so there's a lot of good things going on so I can bring you some really good looking content. Hey, what are you doing? I got a visitor. Hey, Rock, you gonna say hi? Huh? Why don't you just sit there? Okay, Rocky's just gonna sit there with me. I want to address for everyone, roof, hot water heater, an HVAC system. Those are the biggies that we look for. All right, so first off, let's talk about the roof. So the roof is a very controversial. Um, I know there are 25, 30 year architectural shingle roofs, but in Florida, forget it. After 15 years, um, the roofing com or the insurance company is going to want to see that roof replaced. And when I talk about replacement, um, I find a lot of realtors will tell me, oh, the roof's in good shape, and that might be true. But you need to call an insurance carrier to find out what they think, because ultimately, if you're cash, you need insurance. So the insurance company is going to let you know if they'll insure the roof, whatever the age is. Um, if you're financed, well, the bank is gonna require insurance, so it's a vicious circle. But in your inspection, your inspector will tell you, you know, they send up a drone or they get up on the roof and they say, okay, it's got four to seven years worth of life. Things. First off, they're going to check the shingles. Um, and that's going to tell you if all the shingles are in place to prevent any leaks. Then, which more than likely your insurance company will request and demand is what they call a wind mitigation um, inspection. And that makes sure that um, the roof the trusses are secured to the home in the event we have a wind event, the roof isn't going to blow off the home. So the insurance company is gonna look at those things. They wanna look at the shingles um, for life and or lack of, and a wind mitigation report. Ron DeSantis passed some legislation which will help alleviate, but we won't see prices in um, homeowners insurance go down for about then 12 to 18 months. Um, previously, you know, these guys knock on your door and say, hey, can we go look at your roof? And the next thing you know, they come back and say, your roof is damaged and it needs to be replaced. So um, this legislation says that um, if the repairs are being to the made to the roof, that's more than 25% damaged. Sorry. If the roof is 25% or more damaged, but it has, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to read it exactly. If repairs are made to the roof that is more than 25% damaged, the entire roof needed to re be replaced. That was previously. The new law states that 
It modifies this so that if the roof is more than 25% damaged but complies with the state's 2007 building code, it only needs to be repaired. So that's big news for the insurance companies. Um, so we'll start to see rates come down, but again, that's probably the reporting not 12 to 18 months. Um, also, there is more information that, again, if the roof is 15 years old and um, there's a claim, the insurance company, if they have an inspection and it says that the roof has at least five years on it, that um, they cannot, cannot refuse coverage. So if you know your roof is about that old, you better get an inspection. Even if you are living in the home, you're going to need to get inspection because the um, insurance company made you Bye, Rock. He's done. Um, the insurance company um, may come to you and say, hey, you got to get your roof replaced. So as long as you know and kind of budget for that, you're not going to be in shock. Um, if you have any questions about the roof, please put it in the comments below and I will answer anything you have. You always can call me or email me. Um, my contact information is here. Um, the air conditioning or the HVAC system, typically they last 12 years, 15 years, um, but that's something that we also check when we're making the purchase to see the age of this. That you can get by with. Um, I always tell people run until it breaks. Um, and you can buy a warranty when you buy the home. And then if it breaks, whatever your warranty says, they'll come and pay for a, a visit and fix it, whatever the warranty dictates. It's like, it's an insurance policy. Hot water heater, um, if it's old, like probably 15 years, the insurance company is going to want it replaced probably within 30 days of purchase. Those are a couple hundred dollars. I've had two instances where my buyers had to replace it immediately after occupancy. So just so you know that those things will come down the pike when you're buying a home here in Florida. Next, I wanna to get to a couple of questions. Uh, I did mention I am writing that ebook. It is an edit right now, and a lot of these things will be addressed in that ebook, but a question that comes up <clears throat> often. MLS, or sales representative to the villages, can I use one or do I need both? I am here to tell you, you need both. Unless, caveat, unless you're only looking at new construction. If you're only looking at new construction and then you don't want anything to do with the resale home or pre-owned home, whatever you want to call it, um, then you only can get there through the villages. A resale home, if you want to see all of the properties that are available to you in the villages, you must work with both. Sellers have a choice of the person that they wish to list their home. You need, you need both, absolutely. So you can see everything that's available to you. And when it comes down to it, um, you need to make an informed decision. Uh, I have a lot of friends that work for the Villages and if you don't have a representative that you know, um, I can give you a couple of names of people that I know and I like them and trust them for you to work with. And um, yeah, so you need both. VLS, we call it via MLS and VLS. There's a whole chapter of that devoted into my ebook. Um, and the last question I'm gonna go over today because I don't wanna keep this too long. Um, this is from Robert and I received this today. Thank you, Robert, for sending me a note. Um, they wanna move to the villages, uh, but they have to sell their home and what would happen if they have to sell their home before they buy another one? Do I have any suggestions? Yes, I do, Robert. Um, now that the market is starting to slow a little bit, homeowners, in my opinion, will be more willing to take a home sale contingency. So simply what that means is um, you start shopping for your home here in the villages and when we write up the offer, we check off that you have a home sale contingency. And that means that if your home does not sell, you get to back out of the deal and you will get your money back because we've written that into the agreement 
as part of the contingency. There's a whole chapter on contracts in my ebook too. You have your home to sell, you find a home here. The first thing the listing agent is going to ask me when I put in an offer with a home sale contingency, they're going to want to know where you are in the process. Has the home been listed? Is it through inspection? When's it ready to close? They might want to see a copy of the contract. You take the names and the prices out, but they're going to want to see the terms of that contract. Um, and those things are all normal to ask in a home sale contingency. So if you find a home you like and your house isn't even listed for sale yet, probably not going to have someone accept an offer. But if it's on the market, you've had some offers, it's in the, you know, whatever stage of the process it is, that's all up to the seller to say, we'll take that, we'll take that, and um, you continue to move forward through the process. Now, there's one other thing, it's called a kickout clause. So a kickout clause says, okay, we will take your home sale contingency, but we are going to continue to market my home. And in the event we get another offer, we come back to you first and say we have another offer. Where are you at in the process? And basically what it says is you have to put up or shut up. If you are not at the point where you are 100% certain that that's going to close, you may end up losing that sale. But, you know, everybody wants to protect themselves and you don't blame them. If you're on, you, you've been on that side, on the sell side, on the buy side, I understand kickout clause. If you have a question about the kickout clause, write it in the comments below and I want to be your resource here. So again, thank you very much for watching. My name is Robin Cavallaro. I am a licensed realtor here in the state of Florida. Um, we talked today about roof, HVAC, hot water heaters, um, insurance questions down below. Um, we spoke about home sale contingencies and also um, if you need a VLS and MLS, do you need both? We went over that in this episode. Again, thank you so much. And don't forget, I'm going to post here's a word from one of our sponsors. If you just take a moment to watch this. I want to thank Locked and Secure Home Watch Service for sponsoring this portion of the video. Locked and Secure is a home watch service here in the villages and surrounding areas. We take care of your snowbird home as well as your VRBO, Airbnb, and also if you're just going on vacation, Locked and Secure, give us a call. Let's get back to the video. And don't forget, subscribe to my email newsletter. Friday, I will come out with another video that will go through the homes, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and that will come out in my email newsletter. So, I had a good day right today. We went and played softball. My pickleball group got together and we had a softball social, so I hadn't played softball in a while. It was fun. But now, I'm off to work. All right, everyone, have a great one. I'll see you next time.